Walder. Um, Tracy, I love having you on to kind of break everything down for us. I was saying earlier, this guy is like quicksand. I mean, Burham made it 800 plus miles in his first escape. He evaded law enforcement for weeks. What do you think, you know, put us in his brain. What do you think he learned from that first escape that he's now using on this attempt? Well, thank you so much for having me, Marky. I think the first thing that he learned, quite frankly, is to perhaps what he did in that first escape was he he went ahead and held another elderly couple hostage. And so I think that's really what got police on his trail that, during that first escape. And my guess is during the second escape, he's not going to do something so brazen. He may be engaging in petty crime and things like that to obtain clothing, food, money, those kinds of things. But I don't think he's going to do something to rise to that attention that he did again. Again, I also think this is complicated by the fact that this is primarily a ground search because this is such a densely thick wooded forest. Yeah, and uh, as Dre mentioned, locals now being told to keep their doors locked. Uh, Tracy, talk to me about the, the facility that he broke out of. Do you know anything about that? And was it fully equipped to handle somebody like Burham? So, Margie, that's actually my first question that I had when all of this happened. You know, he he escaped the first time from a jail. A jail is different than a prison, and jail is where accused go prior to trial. Typically, these are medium security facilities. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Typically, people do not break out of them. And this is by law where people are supposed to go waiting for trial. However, I think because he had demonstrated that he had escaped before, he really should have been in a high or a max security prison. This would have been a case where that would have been an exception. And I have major questions about where he was and the fact that he was in the prison prison yard so late at night. That, that to me is odd as well. Yeah. And also talk about law enforcement tactics right now at this hour, multiple days in, knowing he has survivalist skills, he's accused of murder. How does that change the game here? So I think, first of all, as I said, this is primarily a ground search because you cannot really do aerial searches in places like this. The fact, though, that they are finding those campsites is, quite frankly, a good thing because those are little breadcrumb trails that could ultimately lead them to him. However, this is going to be a very long and tedious search, almost completely on what we call land nav or, or land ground searches. And so I think that's the first tactic that they're going to employ. The second tactic that I see really that they're going to do is hopefully carpet the media because that's how he was found the second time is this case was in the front of the news really and a lot of folks knew who this person was and it was a person who, right. who turned him in because they recognized him yeah and that's exactly what we're trying to do is get his his name out there his pictures his tattoos which are cr quite recognizable last question for you tracy any idea why he was in the recreation yard at 11 o'clock at night I mean, is that typical for inmates to have that kind of, you know, roam around freedom at that time of day? The short answer is absolutely not. Okay. I mean, look, he's in a medium security prison. This is a prison that, because it's medium security, would have a rather rigid schedule. We're not talking about a, a minimum security prison here. And in my opinion, that would have meant lights out at around 8 or 9 o'clock. And so I'm very surprised that he would have been in the prison yard where you are not restrained mm -hmm. at 11 20 at night. Yeah, I would have thought curfew would have been much earlier than that. Uh, Tracy Walder, always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.